So the idea of Baby Don't Cry is really me talking to me. So it's like somebody, the girl, giving the advice to the other girl that's gone through all these experiences, saying, don't worry, it's going to be fine. That's, that's what it's about. Where Have All The Good Men Gone is a song I wrote quite a long time ago, actually, with my songwriting par partner, Gil Sang. And I just wanted to have fun with that song. And, and I think it was me saying, being unafraid to say, where have all the good men gone? But have fun with it. And we hope that we represented that in writing this song. With the lyrics, I think they're quite fun. And I hope that women and men can relate to some of the situations that that I've been through talking about in, in this song. I just wanted to have fun with it, but also say it how it is. I believe, is actually I believed. <laughs> in fact, I still don't know today whether it's I believe or I believed. Um, it's really, it is what it is. It's about um, keeping your hope and keeping your dreams alive, even when it doesn't look like that's happening in, in real life. It's like believing in the face of adversity. New Boy, I wrote on a dark and dingy, wintry, cold night in a cold music studio, which is my music studio, or was that one back then. I'd met somebody and I liked him and I messed it up after a week. And so I wrote that song to try and win him back. And that's what I did. And then I sent it to him. And you want to know if I got him back. Tune in for more on that one. Do Me Right is about one of the situations that happened to me that kind of inspired the record which was really over a breakup and it really is about saying um you should have treated me better it's that message you should have you should have treated me better you should have you should do me right but instead you didn't um and again with those types of messages i wanted to have fun with it and not be too serious My Only Lament is my song on the album where I wanted to write something that reflected um, the kind of more lonely, darker times in my life. And I feel, or I have felt quite emotional when I listen to that song because it really does represent some of the loneliness that you go through sometimes as a person, as an artist, as a woman, whatever feelings you're going through. And I thought that that was a great way to say it, as in like, actually in life, I'm, I'm happy with lots of things, but this is, my, this is my only limit. I'll Be Loving You was the first song that I wrote on my record. And I, I had just broken up with somebody and I literally wrote that song and in between writing it was kind of crying on the sofa. So it was very raw and it was me speaking to myself, hoping for a future where I could look at that person and love them for who they are and be over the in love feeling, get over that stage and be able to have that distance where you can just be okay with it and make peace with yourself. And so for me, it's still one of my favorite songs on the album. When I think of Time Won't Wait, for some reason I think that I'm on a train. Um, that's how I always imagine that where I am on that song. It, it, it's the same kind of message, it's about, it's got a double meaning that song, it's kind of like time won't wait for you. You had me, but you know what? You messed up, so I let you go. Um, but there's a, just the, there's a double meaning with the, in the in the chorus with "Time Won't Wait for You." Um, for me, it's just a kind of a moving song. It's just 
it's just probably the song that you probably want to put on when you're driving somewhere or you know on a journey for some reason that's how that's how it rings with me nothing left to do but smile again draws upon personal situations that have happened in my life and once again I just wanted to take those situations and apply them and make them a bit more kind of light-hearted because you do have those days don't you when everything is like oh my god ah you just want to tear your hair out but actually instead of tearing your hair out it's just this is so like this is almost laughable now this is so ridiculous this is just laughable so it's like sometimes in life when things are so bad you just have to laugh and it's like that so you've just got to smile Don't Go Chasing Your Heart is again um, a favourite song of mine on the album and I wrote it with a songwriter called James Bryan and I wanted to write something that was very beautiful and I'm really into waltzes and that's kind of like my more classical influences and I wanted to write something sentimental, beautiful, something that really showed off the harp as well and it was the last song that I wrote on my record and consequently, I think it's quite reflective. Again, it's just saying, stop chasing your tail, essentially. What you're looking for is really within. It's within your heart. And by the way, I don't think I practice what I preach. I'm constantly like, like being the wiser self in all my songs, but I don't think I live that in my life. Um, so somewhere in me, my subconscious is a sensible person telling me how to live my life, but I don't think I manage to do that in real life. So I, I'm very fond of that song because it's the last song I wrote and it's the most reflective song and it's just like making peace. It's like the journey has ended, this part of the journey, and it's just, I've made peace now. Like the Movies is, again, a fun song. Um, I wrote with Sheldon Comrich, who's in my orchestra, and... I wanted to write something that was a bit tongue in cheek and reflected those kind of Hollywood influences. So we turned it into a song about why is Hollywood feeding us this, you know, this fantasy of this is how it's meant to be, the happy ever after. It's kind of poking, poking a finger in, in the face of Hollywood, really, but in, you know, a fun way. The Other Side of You was written um, with the same person that I wrote Nothing Left to Do But Smile With and I wanted to write a song that was had a bit more of a groove that was a bit more rockabilly in its approach I wanted to move away from the harp sound in that way and so that was the first song I wrote in that in, in that style and again it was my it was my wiser self talking to me telling me things that i knew i knew but i that i wasn't quite looking at it it was like the the inner me telling giving me a message the other side of you like i know what you're like but so don't be surprised when if that happens cuz really i knew so washed up on love is another favourite song of mine on the album. I was listening to artists like Solomon Burke around that time and I really wanted to write a song that had that kind of 50s feel to it, that kind of groove to it and that kind of beautifulness to it. And I do think of my laundrette every time I, I hear that song. I wrote the lyrics of that song thinking about that. Some of the song was written whilst I was sitting in my laundrette um, the idea of kind of like incorporating that side of my life into my music of like, you know, taking someone's troubles and washing them. I liked the idea of, wouldn't it be wonderful if you could just take, drop off your, like you drop off your service wash, but you drop off your troubles, give them to the lady, she does a little wash and gives you back a new heart. I just like the idea of that. Um, so it's the story, it's the story of that. Um, and a bit like a sentimental song too. 
Do Your Time, I wrote with Joe Sang, who's a fabulous artist. We have such fun when we work together. And I wanted to write a song. I wanted to do a duet with him. So we decided to make it a little bit about a song where you're, I'm kind of nagging him, you know, to kind of get on with it and stop complaining. And, you know, and he's kind of having a go back at me, like a couple at each other and poking fun at each other. I suppose going back to kind of Louis Prima and Keely Smith type of influences on that. So a while back, I made an EP called Urban Lullabies where I took songs that I really wanted to turn on their head. I know it's been done a million times now, everyone does covers, but I'm pleased to say that my covers are so different that even like a music journalist couldn't identify the original song. So I took a song by T.I., a rapper. I took a John Mayer song and I did Nirvana, Smells Like Teen Spirit. And I also did Paolo Nettini's song, Candy, because I just fell in love with that song. And I, I, I think he's such an incredible artist as well. I wanted to make that song beautiful and bring it to life on the harp. And all the songs on that EP were about making the harp shine through and bringing sentimentality and beauty and a softness and a delicacy to those types of songs. So. I feel I achieved that with Candy. I think it's a huge leap away from where it originally was as a song. Um, and of course, my mum prefers my version. <laughs> 